Concrete is one of the most widely used construction materials around the world. It is used in the construction of various projects including highways, dams, bridges, and buildings. With such a high demand for this material, research has been done to determine how carbon nanotube fibers can enhance some of its properties. The topics that we'll be discussing today are what carbon nanotubes are, why is it being researched, how it works, the processing and manufacturing of them, the mixed designs, and the electrical properties. So what carbon nanotubes are, they are allotropes of carbon that consist of one or multiple graphitic shells wrapped into a cylindrical tube. This can be divided into two groups, single-walled carbon nanotubes and multi-walled carbon nanotubes. They align into tubes and the hexagonal networks are held together by van der Waals force. The typical diameter of carbon nanotubes range from 2 to 100 nanometers. The world is always looking for new ways to improve on our current technologies and materials. The next big thing being researched is the use of carbon nanotubes as reinforcement in concrete mixtures. Carbon nanotube fibers offer a variety of benefits to this new type of reinforcement, including lightweight reinforcement compared to steel, high increase in strength when used alone or in conjunction with steel, stronger concrete means less can be used, and extremely high impacts on strength. The carbon nanotubes must be evenly mixed with the water that is being added to the cementing materials so that they are evenly dispersed in the overall mixture. If they are clumped together, as shown in the figure on the right, it doesn't increase the strength by a significant amount. They are integrated into the cement matrix by filling the voids as it hardens and the cement binds to the walls of the carbon nanotubes. Cracks inevitably form under a high enough loading, but carbon nanotubes are stronger in tension than concrete is and the binding strength of the concrete makes it difficult for the nanotubes to be pulled out of it. So the carbon nanotubes slow the formation of cracks by holding the concrete together and bridging the microcracks as they form, as shown in the figure at the bottom. By doing this, they slow the transformation of these microcracks into macrocracks, thus increasing the concrete strength. In many areas of engineering, carbon nanotubes have become of high interest, which developed the need for low cost and mass production methods. One study and approach proved that multi-walled carbon nanotubes can be effectively synthesized by arc discharge. This process is shown in the figure, and it uses iron as a catalyst and sulfur as the promoter. It involves the evaporation of the graphite anode rod and the condensation of the deposit on the cathode rod. This method proves to be a successful and low-cost way of producing carbon nanotubes. Although there are still many unsolved problems with the industrialization of carbon nanotubes, the development of large-scale mass production synthesis processes are currently in high demand. When carbon nanotube fibers are added to the mixture, it becomes quite unworkable, even with a high water-cement ratio. Pore volumes decrease by 64% with the addition of carbon nanotube fibers, which increases the strength as well. Add mixtures are added to carbon nanotube concrete in small portions by a mass of cement to increase strength. These portions are as small as 0.5%, 1%, and 2%. As the water ratio increases, the amount of cement decreases. Therefore, the amount of add mixture also decreases. The figure shows the relationship between the compressive strength and water cement ratio with different carbon nanotube portions added. Due to the nanotubes working by filling voids, and as with other components of concrete, there is an optimal concentration with respect to the cement. A higher percentage fills too many voids, and a smaller amount doesn't add enough reinforcement to bridge the cracks. Various studies have come to a similar conclusion as to what is shown on these graphs. Approximately 0.05% produce the optimum increase in compressive, tensile, and flexural strengths. These graphs show that in one experiment, there was an increase in compressive strength by 5.4 MPa, although it only increased the strength in the flexural test by 0.68 MPa. Adding a higher concentration did increase the strength in the flexural test in some of the other experiments, but always decrease the strength in the compression and tension tests. 
The water cement ratio that produces the best concrete depends on what is required of the concrete, such as if it needs to be more workable, as well as what other additives are included and what type of cement is being used. The same is true for when carbon nanotubes are being added to the concrete. One study tested short and long carbon nanotubes, each at different concentrations, at water cement ratios of 0.3 and 0.5. The results showed that a water cement ratio of 0.3 produced the stronger concrete when the short carbon nanotubes were added at the higher concentration. This, is, this result is expected as the study did not add anything to the water cement mixture aside from the multi-walled carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotube fibers have unique electrical properties. When strained in axial tension, the fibers display electrical tunneling gaps. These gaps are important when the concrete cracks under stress. As the concrete cracks, the electrical tunneling gaps are cut off, allowing a measurement of permanent damage sustained in the concrete. The electrical properties vary depending on the weight percent of the fibers and how they are dispersed in the concrete. As seen in the figure, the red marks indicate highly dispersed fibers to the concrete, while the blue marks indicate fibers that are closer together. As the fibers become grouped closer together and less dispersed, the volume resistivity increases. Thank you. Are there any questions?